Wild Card 2015. Nick Wild, portrayed by Jason Statham, is a former gambling addict now making a living in Las Vegas by taking on unconventional jobs as a self-styled chaperone, essentially serving as a bodyguard to sustain his ongoing struggle with addiction. One day, he assists a client in impressing a woman, Sofia Vergara, and subsequently receives an offer from a young man named Cyrus Kinnick, Michael Angarano, to guide him through Vegas and offer protection while he engages in gambling. During a meal at a diner, Roxy and Hetchy, a waitress and friend of Nick, hands him a message from Holly, Dominic Garcia Laredo, an acquaintance. Holly, a professional escort, recounts a harrowing incident where she was brutally raped and beaten by three unidentified men in a hotel room after a date at the Golden Nugget the previous night. Holly requests Nick's help in identifying and pursuing legal action against her assailants. Upon investigation, Nick discovers that the perpetrator, responsible for assaulting Holly, is Danny DeMarco, Milo Vinamilia, a gangster. DeMarco callously had his henchman abandon Holly in a hospital parking lot. Nick, adopting a guise as someone sent by another criminal, confronts DeMarco at the hotel. A tense encounter ensues, during which Nick successfully defends himself, overpowering DeMarco and his accomplices. With them securely bound, Nick contacts Holly who contemplates seeking revenge by castrating DeMarco. However, moved by DeMarco's plea for forgiveness, Holly opts to take $50,000 from DeMarco's desk and departs the scene. Holly splits the money with Nick and leaves Las Vegas. Nick takes Cyrus to a casino. Playing blackjack with dealer friend Cassandra, Hope Davis, Nick then goes on a huge winning streak with the next dealer, amassing over a half a million. But when he goes to the cashier, he has a sudden anxiety attack then decides to keep on gambling and unfortunately loses his winnings, as well as his original $25,000, on a single blackjack bet with Cassandra. The next morning, Cyrus, revealed to be a self-made millionaire, wants Nick to mentor him on being brave, but Nick declines. At the bar, DeMarco's men arrive to deliver Nick to DeMarco, but Nick fends them off. Nick meets with Baby, Stanley Tucci, the mafia boss of Las Vegas. Baby has received a complaint from DeMarco, who claims that Nick broke into his hotel room, pistol-whipped him, and killed two of his men, all to fund his gambling addiction. Baby takes Nick to a room with DeMarco, where Nick tells his side of the story, that DeMarco killed his own men later, and that DeMarco bears a cut on his penis. Baby tells DeMarco to drop his pants to prove Nick wrong, but he refuses and leaves. At the local diner, Cyrus offers Nick a check for $500,000 and a plane ticket to Corsica for what he has learned from Nick. DeMarco and his men appear in the diner. Cyrus shows his newfound manliness by singing loudly as a distraction so Nick can escape. Nick thinks about his sailboat and then kills the thugs and DeMarco with his utensils behind the diner. Afterwards, Cyrus insists Nick take the check and the ticket, and Nick accepts. Nick then drives out of Las Vegas. Jason Statham movies aren't known for their dialogue. People attend his films for their action sequences, which is why so few filmmakers give Statham much to say. That's a shame, because when given the rare chance to be chatty, Statham becomes more than just a lethal weapon. Wild Card gives him more opportunities to converse than to clobber, and as odd as this may sound, I really enjoyed listening to Statham talk. His fight scenes have their predictable, violent payoffs, but his rambling monologues are unexpectedly gloriously entertaining. This film's tagline should be, come for the stabbing, stay for the gabbing. With Wild Card, screenwriter William Goldman takes a third crack at the story of Nick the Vegas Chaperone. Goldman wrote the source novel in a 1986 film adaptation starring Burt Reynolds, both of which were called Heat. Had the 1986 version starred Bruce Willis instead of Reynolds, Wild Card would be redundant. Statham's take on Nick evokes Willis in his prime. He's as quick to cut a villain down with a quip as he is with a sharp object, and a gloomy rain cloud of vulnerability seems to perpetually hang over his head. Details of Nick's former life are left vague, though one can assume he has an intimate knowledge of all things violent. His current incarnation is a friendly British chap who does favors for people. Everyone we encounter mentions these favors, and how indebted they are to Nick. His latest assignment requires him to get beaten to a pulp by a pudgy, balding guy trying to impress Sofia Vergara. The ruse works, and Nick gets $500 for his troubles. The money helps finance his eventual escape from Las Vegas. 
Nick's desired getaway locale, Corsica, appears in brief flashbacks that look like Ralph Lauren ads. Nick's next assignment involves the battered woman dumped out of a car in Wild Card, as first seen. She's Holly, Dominic Garcia Laredo, an escort who once loved Nick. When he hit rock bottom, she nursed him back to health. Now she wants Nick to help her find the man who brutally raped her before his henchman left her for dead at the hospital. Since Nick knows everyone in the underbelly of Vegas, including a kingpin named Baby, Stanley Tucci, he easily finds the guilty party. Sadistic mafioso Danny DeMarco, Milo Vinamilia, and his henchmen cross paths with Nick at DeMarco's hotel suite, ushering in the first instance of Statham doing what you paid to see him do. Rather than kill Danny, Nick merely roughs him up, paving the way for Holly to exact a humiliating, though non-lethal vengeance on Danny's most prized possession. For his troubles, Nick is paid $50,000 in hush money from Danny's stash. As Holly rides off into an avenged sunset, Nick heads for the nearest blackjack table to attempt the final big score that will hasten his exit from Sin City. The movie is about 40 minutes old. It's here that we realize that Wild Card is two parts The Gambler and three parts The Equalizer. It's better at the former than it is the latter. Statham reeks of a compulsive desperation Mark Wahlberg can't touch, and director Simon West films the big high-stakes gambling sequence with a wide-uckled excitement sorely missing from Wahlberg's remake. It helps that the wonderful Hope Davis plays Nick's friend and dealer, Cassandra. Davis does more with a sympathetic glance than pages of exposition could describe. I'm